Thank you for watching NTD Business coming up. More banks at risk of collapsing, according to a new study. One senator now pushing for tighter regulations. As bank after bank collapses, many wonder, is my money safe? What should I do with my money? We talk to financial professionals to get their opinions. Amazon laying off thousands more workers. Why and who will be affected? A Twitter user goes viral documenting his experience starting a business by following a chatbot's instructions. How did he do it? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good to have you with us. Don Ma here. U.S. stocks ended higher today after a deal to rescue Credit Suisse, as well as central banks' efforts to bolster confidence in the financial system, relieving investors. More on the Swiss bank merger in just a moment. The Dow rose 383 points, or 1.2 percent. S&P added 35 points, 0.9 percent, and the Nasdaq gained 45 points, or 0.4 percent. Banking stocks were mostly higher following sharp losses last week. Among regional banks, PacWest was up after the bank said deposit outflows had stabilized, while New York Community Bank Corp climbed after its unit agreed to buy deposits and loans from Signature Bank. But First Republic shares tumbled almost 50 percent today. J.P. Morgan Chase is reportedly leading talks with other banks to possibly invest in First Republic, according to The Wall Street Journal today. S&P Global further downgraded First Republic into junk status on Sunday, saying the recent cash infusion from large banks may not be enough. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation today decided to break up Silicon Valley Bank. The FDIC made the decision after it couldn't find a buyer for the failed bank last week. The agency will hold two separate auctions for SVB's private bank and traditional deposits unit. The news marked the beginning of the end for SVB. Parent company SVB Financial Group filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection last week. A new study says nearly 190 more banks are at risk of a Silicon Valley bank-style collapse. Meanwhile, Senator Elizabeth Warren is calling for an independent probe into the recent failures of Silicon Valley Bank and more regulation. Entity's Daniel Monahan has more. Researchers with the Social Science Research Network have a dire warning for U.S. banks. They say over 180 banks across the country could collapse. That is, if half of their respective uninsured depositors withdraw their funds. Unlike insured depositors, uninsured depositors stand to lose a part of their deposits if the bank fails. That potentially gives them incentives to run. According to the paper, recent declines in bank asset values very significantly increased the fragility of the U.S. banking system to such uninsured depositor runs. Meanwhile, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren is pushing for tighter banking regulations. These big multi-billion dollar banks loaded up on risk. They boosted their short-term profits. They gave themselves huge bonuses and big salaries, and they exploded their banks. The Democratic senator sent a letter to the inspectors general of the U.S. Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve on Sunday. She is urging regulators to examine the recent management and oversight of the collapsed banks. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. With us is acclaimed economist Robert Dineski and author of the book Rich Nation, Poor Nation. Now, Robert, uh, I was just looking at your newsletter, actually, and I know you saw the study that almost 190 U.S. banks are at risk of a SVB-like collapse. Now, my question to you is, do you agree with the picture that the study painted? Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, yes, I, I, I do agree. The, the banking system is vulnerable. It's vulnerable primarily because the Fed held interest rates down for about 14 years at artificially low levels. And a lot of people got to think that those artificially low levels were somewhere in the vicinity of where rates should be, and they made plans based on that. Now, most people didn't. I think 90% of the banks are probably in good shape, but there were about 10% of the banks that made very, very poor decisions. And we've already seen three of them fail here in the United States. So this is spreading through the system. I expect it to continue to spread. I believe the Fed still has a very difficult time of getting inflation under control. And so they are going to be raising interest rates even more so. We have a tough period of adjustment ahead. It's going to last, I think, until at least the end of this year and possibly even further. 
I don't believe we're looking at another 2008 financial crisis of cascading bankruptcies. And my main reason for that is this is different from 2008. In 2008, the Fed took 40 percent of the money out of the system, as I measure it. I mean, it was an absolute colossal mistake on the part of the Fed. This year, so far, we're in the ninth month of monetary restraint. Uh, and the Federal Reserve has simply stopped creating more money. And we've seen yield curves go inverted. And we've seen a lot of the things that we would expect to see prior to a recession. And now we're seeing the early signs of what I believe will be working through um, trying to correct some of these problems from the past 14 years. Now, here's my argument to you, and I want your thoughts on this. Sure. The reason SVB collapsed is because of a, of a bank run, uh, among other things. Now, if you have a diverse uh, depositor group, then the chances of a bank run is lower. So SVB is sort of different than a lot of other banks because it did not have diverse depositors. So a lot of people th thought alike. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, the, my response is that a study that was done that I referred to in my weekly report uh, claimed that uh, they found 10% of the banks in the system had worse financial conditions than the SVB bank had. I, I believe that apparently there are still a lot of bankers, as with the bankers at SVB, who made terrible mistakes. I mean, I was warning my clients for the past several years that when interest rates were zero, they were artificially low. And when the adjustment came, you were going to see the rates go double, triple what they were. So all your long-term bonds were going to be worth half or even a third or 25 percent of what they were worth. So you got to get away from long-term bonds. And while a lot of people agreed with that, some people just ignored this. And they got hurt terribly as a result of the rise in interest rates. To me, that was bad management. They didn't understand economics. And when people don't understand economics and their businesses fail, they should be punished for that because we don't want to give them more money to play with if they were not smart enough to see something like this coming on. All right. Thank you so much today, Robert. Pleasure having thank you, you on. Thank you, the weekend saw the rescue of Credit Suisse by local rival UBS. The takeover helped the market overall, but U.S. listed shares of Credit Suisse were down sharply today, while UBS group shares were up. Swiss regulators engineered a state-backed takeover for Credit Suisse late Sunday. It's been roiled by years of scandals and recently admitted to problems with past financial reports. One law professor says watchdogs hope to limit any fallout. I think there may have been hope and there may still be hope that uh, problems are somewhat unique to that institution and can be contained to that institution by an intervention that uh, targets, it, targets it specifically. Um, but, um, but I don't know uh, to what extent this will be proven true by events. Uh, you know, once a large and highly connected institution such as this uh, runs into trouble, uh, there's always a risk of contagion.